What's up everyone? Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Here we're going to be talking about the oxidation of alcohols. Specifically, we're going to think about what happens when we oxidize a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary alcohol. Those all give us different products. An oxidation of an alcohol can be represented like this. We'll have an alcohol, so here's our OH group, and we'll have this little O above the arrow which stands for oxidize. So whenever you see this setup, you know what it's asking you to do is predict the product of the oxidation reaction. The products will vary depending on if we have a primary, a secondary, or a tertiary alcohol. Okay, so first of all, let's summarize what happens in the oxidation of alcohols. It has the addition of a bond to oxygen in an alcohol, and the products vary by type of alcohol. A hydrogen on the alpha carbon is lost. So for example, if I look at this oxidation reaction below, I'm gonna first identify the alpha carbon, which is always that carbon connected to the OH group right there. And then I'm gonna think about if it's primary or secondary. Well, remember that if I count the carbons connected to the alpha carbon, that's one, two, that tells me if it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. So because there's two carbons on the alpha carbon, that's secondary. And now we wanna think about how many hydrogens there are on the alpha carbon. So if we count the bonds currently to the alpha carbon, there's one, two, three. And that means we need one hydrogen that is gonna be attached there to the alpha carbon. These hydrogens are like tickets that allow your alcohol to be oxidized. So every single time it's oxidized, one of those is gonna go away. And if you don't have any of them, you can't oxidize it. So because this one has one alpha hydrogen, it's gonna be able to be oxidized once. And we'll look at an example of a secondary alcohol being oxidized in a second. But let's start with primary alcohols. Primary alcohols have just one carbon connected to their alpha carbon. So if we think about categorizing this guy, we'll notice that it has the alpha carbon here, and then we have just one carbon connected to that. So that's a primary alcohol. Primary alcohols, because they only have one carbon attached, are always gonna have two hydrogens. So there's one, two hydrogens hanging off of that alpha carbon. Again, we always need our bonds to add up to four for carbon, and so that tells us that there's four uh, total bonds if we have two hydrogens. Now remember what I said, these hydrogens are like tickets that allow your alcohol to be oxidized. So I have one, two tickets that allow my alcohol to be oxidized then twice. Primary alcohols are the most challenging ones to predict and then each step gets easier. When we go to secondary, that's easier and tertiary is easier still. In fact, tertiary has no possible oxidation, makes it really simple. So this one's gonna look a little scary and then the secondary and tertiary will look much nicer. When we wanna predict the products, what we do, for our primary alcohols is we're gonna redraw the OH group going straight up. So I'm just gonna draw my same alcohol, but this OH group, instead of drawing it off to the right, I'm gonna draw it going straight up. I haven't changed what my molecule is there. I'm just preparing to write it with a geometry that'll be easier to recognize and easier to handle when I write my next product. So I have, just like I said, two hydrogens here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bond to my oxygen. So that's what we do on primary alcohols. We add a bond to an oxygen, and that's what we do in secondary and tertiary. We always are adding a bond to oxygen. So I'm gonna make that a double bond. This does a couple things. Because it's a double bond between carbon and oxygen, it suddenly means that both my carbon and my oxygen there have extra bonds. And so we're gonna to have to get rid of an alpha hydrogen so that we just have four bonds there. And then similarly, our oxygen only wants two bonds, and now that we've added another bond, we gotta get rid of this hydrogen. And that, in fact, is our product. That guy is called an aldehyde. Now, we still have one alpha hydrogen, and so we can oxidize it one more time. So I'm gonna start once again by just redrawing my same exact product and my one alpha hydrogen. Remember, I gotta get rid of the alpha hydrogen again, and I need to add a bond to oxygen. This oxygen can't accept any more bonds. It already has a double bond, so it's done. And so at this point, if we wanna add another bond to oxygen, we actually have to add another oxygen on the molecule. And because oxygens need two bonds, we're gonna add our H hanging off of it there. Notice now there's zero alpha hydrogens, no more hydrogens on that alpha carbon. And so it can't be oxidized anymore. Like I said, this is the most complicated pattern. So this is the one that's gonna take you a little while to get down. The other ones are more straightforward. So when we summarize our reaction for primary alcohols, our primary alcohols go to an aldehyde, and then they go to this thing that has the OH hanging off of a C double O bond called a carboxylic acid. When we predict each step, we're gonna to wanna to draw our alcohol pointing straight up and show the hydrogen on the alpha carbon. Each step adds another bond to oxygen and loses an alpha hydrogen. Okay, so that's primary alcohols. Again, the hardest one. Let's go to a secondary alcohol. Here we have a secondary alcohol, which we can identify by going ahead and marking our alpha carbon. Here's our alpha carbon. 
And then notice that it has one, two carbons hanging off of it. That means that it has a total of three bonds as drawn, and so there's one hydrogen implied. Okay? Now, once again, we're going to just start by redrawing our molecule. And we do want to draw our OH going straight up, but it's already straight up for secondary alcohols in general. And so we'll just redraw exactly what we have right there. That's always a good first step when you're predicting the products of a reaction because we're going to start with the same basic molecule and we're going to make some minor changes. Okay? We want to drop our two hydrogens that we see there and add a bond to oxygen just like before. So we add a bond to oxygen, that gets rid of our alpha hydrogen down there, and it gets rid of the hydrogen on the OH group. And now notice there's no alpha hydrogen, so it can't be oxidized again. So that's the complete oxidation of a secondary alcohol. It goes from a secondary alcohol to a ketone. That's just where we have a C double O bond in the middle of our molecule. We added a bond to oxygen and we dropped our alpha hydrogen. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The tertiary are gonna be your favorite. They're the most straightforward. They can't be oxidized. Why is that? Well, let's once again think about categorizing this alcohol. Here's our alpha hydrogen. And it's connected to one, two, three carbons. I'm sorry, I mean our alpha carbon. And it's connected to three other carbons. So how many hydrogens are there on our alpha carbon? Well, it already has one, two, three, four bonds. So there's no hydrogens there. And so we've run out of tickets to oxidize our molecule and we can't oxidize it. So there's just no product. So if you're ever given a tertiary alcohol and asked, hey, what happens when we oxidize it? The correct answer is we can't oxidize it. Not possible. Okay? So here's a summary. Our primary alcohols go to aldehydes and then carboxylic acids. Our secondary alcohols go to ketones and our tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized at all. In the next lesson, we'll do a bunch of practice problems so you get really comfortable with this.